Hey everyone, it's Smipe Hands Chess and we're here again today with another Season 17 Super Final game. This is game number 28 between Leela Chess Zero and Stockfish and Leela is playing white in this game, Stockfish is playing black and I'll just get straight into this. So e4 was played, b6, d4, bishop b7, bishop d3, e6 and knights f3 were played and this is the end of the book moves. So from here on in it's the engines who are playing. And Stockfish's first move, so to speak, is c5, undermining the d4 pawn. And Leela protects it with c3. And Stockfish plays knight to f6, attacking e4. And again, Leela protects it with the queen. d5 is played, e5, attacking the knight. Stockfish jumps it back to d7. Leela develops with bishop to f4. Knight c6 is played. And now Leela plays h4, a typical move by her and by alpha 0 launching this flanking pawn up the board and we have actually had a similar game like this previously there Leela's done this so Stockfish plays c4 hits the bishop it drops back to c2 h6 is played and now actually Leela plays a very interesting move king to f1 so instead of castling she's just going to march her king onto the g1 square and say it's pretty safe there and not move the rook off the h file so it's taken it's going to take Leela two moves to do this um but at least she manages to get the rook into an ideal position. As we'll see in this game, this rook is absolute beast. And he's really a big annoyance against this g7 pawn, as we'll see. So b5 was played by Stockfish. King g1. a5. So, okay, Stockfish is doing correct things here. Gaining some space on the queen side. h5 from Leela. So, stopping the advancement of this g pawn. b4 is played. And Leela just ignores this and plays rook h3. So the idea is to play rook g3 and undermine the g7 pawn. And this h-pawn does a great job of stopping the g-pawn from moving up the board. Stockfish plays knight to b6, and Leela finishes her plan of rook to g3. And ultimately this g-pawn now cannot be moved. It's protected by the f8 bishop, so inadvertently this bishop also can't move at the moment. And if Stockfish tries to protect the pawn with, let's say, rook to g8, then just bishop h7 can come in and hit this rook, and it's forced to move. So all of a sudden... Black's position isn't really easy on this side of the board. Stockfish continued their game though with bishop a6, so focusing on this side of the board. Leela moves her queen off that diagonal, and then bishop b5 is played. Now interestingly here, a good move actually was uh, rook g4 was recommended. A, a very weird looking move. Uh, but the point is that say after, let's say b takes c3, white's fine after knight takes c3. If queen d7 here, the idea behind this rook g4 move was to play moves like bishop g3 and play bishop h4. So in a way I kind of wanted Leela to play rook g4 here, but just because it's such an unusual way of dealing with the rooks. I mean it's gone from h1 to h3 to g3 to g4. It would just be very weird. But Leela just defended with bishop to d2. Stockfish continued with rook a7. There was bishop e1, knight d7, and Leela played b3, striking out at Stockfish's pawn chain. If black takes this with b takes c3 though, then knight takes c3 can be played attacking the bishop. And if this retreats back, Leela can just collapse his pawn chain with b takes c4, bishop takes, and then bishop to a4 attacking the knight. And if queen c8 to defend, there's knight b5 attacking the rook. If the takes takes rook c7, rook b1, arguably white stands better here, because white can play a4, attacking this a5 pawn as well, and maybe play queen b3. And again, this rook on g3 is an absolute monster, hitting this g7 pawn. So back in the game, instead of b takes c3, c takes b3 was played instead, and Lily recaptured with the a pawn. And again, I thought maybe black can take on c3, but again, knight takes, bishop a6, and bishop d3, causing a trade of pieces. And if play continued on with queen to b8, Lily can just play bishop d2. And if rook b7, they have this really nice move now, knight takes d5, sacking a piece. And after takes, white can play knight to h4. Again, black is a piece up here, but it's actually really struggling for moves. Note they can't move the bishop, really, because of this uh, g pawn attacked. And there's not a lot black can do without weakening their position. I looked at what happened if black can sack this g7 pawn with bishop e7, but then white can play knight to f5. If king f8, there's queen to f3. Bishop g5, and queen takes d5. If black takes on d2, White can take on c6, and if queen c7 offering a trade of queens, queen e4, bishop b4, and at the end of it play queen g4, rook h7, and knight takes 
g7. And here white's got three pawns for the piece and a very good attack. So going back to the game, maybe b takes c3 isn't so good for black. Obviously the game may have not continued that way that I just shown, but it was just one variation of many. However, in the actual game, Stockfish played queen c8. Leela protected their king with king h2. And play continued on with queen to b8. So I'm not sure what Stockfish is doing exactly, just moving the queen around onto these uh, open files. But anyway, bishop d2 was played, rook c7, knight to e1. Bishop a6 and Lila played queen g4. Bishop c8. And I've put down here that this is an incredibly weird move by Stockfish. Uh, because it just goes against all the principles. I'm not really sure what that move does. Maybe he's trying to guard the e6 square with the bishop. Against some potential sacrifices. But um, I think it's a weird move. Maybe it's making way for a piece somewhere. But after knight to d3 I think white's doing absolutely fine here. They play rook a7, so okay, maybe the bishop c8 was to move this rook here to guard a5, but still it looks very odd. Play continued on, bishop b3, knight to e7, knight to c1, queen c7, and then just queen back to d1. Again, if black takes on c3, white can just play knight to e2 and win back the pawn. And after bishop a6, just take on c3. If rook b7, white can play rook c1, queen b8. And after f4, white's doing actually really nicely here. And I think we'd all prefer to take white's position. And if a move like knight to f5, white can just take this and take on d5. So back in the game, rook a6 played, knight to e2, rook c6, attacking the c file. Rook a2 guards the bishop on c2. And again, if black takes here, white can just play bishop c1 and release a rook on g3 to attack the c3 square. And if knight to f5, if bishop takes, pawn takes, and knight takes, and win back the pawn. So in the game, knight b8 was played, and Lila finally now moves their c-pawn up with c4. There's a trade. Rook takes c4, wins a pawn for black all of a sudden. But Lila plays knight d2, kicking the rook away. The rook retreats backwards, and Lila plays knight to f4, threatening to play bishop to a4. So white's given up a pawn. But they've got a um, really good dynamic piece play here. The rook on g3 again does a great job of stopping um, these two pieces from getting out. And white's got a lot of threats coming in. So bishop d7 stops the bishop a4 idea. If bishop a4 here, I think black can play knight to a5. Takes, takes, rook g4, queen b8. And black's got the two pass pawns on the a and b file. They've given up the exchange for this. But um, yeah, these are quite unstoppable in this position. So after bishop d7, Lily didn't play bishop a4, she played bishop d3 instead. Rook c1 was played, attacking the queen. Now it is possible actually queen takes c1 here, because if queen takes queen, white can play knight c4, attacking the queen with the bishop. Queen e1 is the only square, and then white can just play knight d6 check. And after king d8, there's knight takes f7 check. King c8, rook c2 check. Black can block, but then just comes rook c1. Trapping the queen, and once black takes the rook and bishop recaptures, rook g8 to move it off uh, the h h square. Bishop h7, knight takes d4, rook d3. White is just in an absolutely supreme position. So it's very surprising queen takes c1 wasn't played here by Leela, but maybe she just thought queen e2 was stronger. Anyway, black now played knight to d5. There was a trade, and actually Leela was very crafty with rook takes a5. Winning back the pawn, and after queen takes, knight b3, forking the queen and the rook. So knight takes the rook, white's won the pawn back, and knight c6 is played. So we're into an equal position once again, but black's got a passed b pawn. However, you'd have to argue that white's actually got the stronger pieces here, and there's no way this pawn is moving down the board yet due to this knight and this bishop and this queen are blocking these squares. Queen f3 attacks d5, bishop b6 to defend. Knight to e2, queen b7, getting behind the pawn. But well, white plays knight to f4, which attacks the d5 square again. Knight d8 to protect the d5 pawn with the queen. And also this knight protects the bishop. But Lila takes it anyway. Knight takes bishop, knight takes back. And all of a sudden white's left with the two bishops, arguably the better two pieces. And Lila's very crafty. She plays bishop c4, attacking d5. And obviously the d5 pawn is pinned, so if pawn takes, then queen takes queen. So knight c7 was played to support d5. 
and Lila just craftily blocks this b-pawn with the bishop. Play continued on with queen c6. Lila protected the bishop on b3 with the queen. The king went to d8. Bishop a4 attacking the queen, which goes to e6. Bishop c2, and now there's a bit of back and forth here with the queen and bishop. So black gets their king onto the other side of the board. And there's a lot of floundering around at this moment in time. So Lila plays f4, king b7, bishop goes to d2, and Lila plays f5. So suffocating black's position. Queen e7 to check on h4, but then the rook comes in to stop this. Queen d7, queen f3 attacking d5 twice. Again, just stopping black from making any progress. So now this rook attacks this pawn. The queen and the bishop attacking this pawn. This bishop also attacks this pawn. And it's very really hard to move these pieces for black, so the king just has to move instead. Bishop e1, queen c6, still defends everything, uh, but it's getting trickier for black to move. Queen protects the bishop, f6. Bishop e1 attacks the queen, the queen jumps back, and again, Leo just slowly suffocates like a python. Rook g6, so pinning this f6 pawn. King b7, queen f3. Rook h7 to protect g7. Okay, so now maybe this bishop can move around the board somewhere. But now this rook on h7 is constantly defending this g pawn. Bishop g3, king a7, queen d1, bishop b7. And again, not much progress is being made by either side at this moment. Except maybe for Leela, just due to the fact she's suffocating black's position so much. But eventually after a few moves um, here, bishop f8 was played. I look to f takes e5, but uh, again, I think white gets the better of this with d takes e5, bishop g5, rook g4, and again, white's attacking b4, two pieces attacking d5, um, and look at this horrendous rook for stockfish, terrible. So again, bishop f8 was played, and a lot of shuffling going on, high-end shuffling as we call it now, but still, white's got a good grip on this game, and black's literally going nowhere. So slowly, this is what Lila does, just slowly improves her position. Okay, she pushes the pawn up. And basically, yeah, she's just like a big clamp on black's position. The two bishops are doing a wondrous job of stopping any progress being made. And I think we'd all prefer white in this position. So bishop f2, nice, protects the bishop. King c6, rook g4. And again, after a few moves, there's a lot of rook and queen moves at the moment because they're the only two pieces that can actually make um, progress without weakening the position. And queen a2, king b6. And now looks at bishop takes d5. Maybe it could have been played after knight takes, queen takes, queen c6, takes, takes. Bishop e3, b3, bishop c1 to stop uh, b2. Takes, takes, rook h8, king h3. I think white's got the better of this game. They're a pawn up, however, maybe it wasn't enough for Lila to take this pawn. Maybe she didn't feel like she had enough compensation. So play continue on with queen e2. Queen c3 was played. Queen f3, and finally there's a trade of queens. And Stockfish moves their king to c6 to defend d5. Lila checked, the king retreated back, and now Lila just gets her king slowly over to the other side of the board. Oh yeah, I should go back here actually. So bishop e3 was played. And again, I've just highlighted this rook and white's rook. These Both these rooks are going nowhere. But ultimately, it'll be Leela to decide when the rooks can move away. Um, and Leela's always got a tempo in hand here because at any point, she could just play rook g6 and go rook back to g4 to create some tempos if need be. Whereas this rook on h7 can never move because then rook takes g7. So king b6 attacks the bishop. Bishop a4. And as we'll see here, the king's getting to the other side of the board. Bishop c6, attacking d5. The king attacks the bishop. And Lila's just slowly making some minuscule moves. Knight b5. Now look at this position, and actually, white can just take this off if they wish. Bishop takes, king takes, and just play g4. And if play continues on, we can take on f6. Bishop takes, and just play bishop e5. Forcing black to take. And after king c5, e6. King d6, just king takes b4, and white's in the driving seat in this end game. So play continued on even more. This is an incredibly long game, once again, by these two engines. Uh, but eventually, white plays his e6, the king goes back to um, b6, and just bishop to d7, knight to b5, 
and Lily wins the pawn with bishop takes b4. Knight goes to d6 though, forcing white to take, and even though it's opposite colored bishops, white actually is a pawn up and has a passed e pawn. Also again, this g7 pawn is weak. So king c2, king c7, king goes to d3, king b7, and just back and forth a few times with these bishops. So the bishop goes to f8, bishop to f7 now, king c6, and this is where things get interesting. Lila plays bishop g8, attacking the rook, the rook goes to h8, e7 is played, forcing black to take, and then finally Lila captures this g7 pawn. Hitting the bishop on e7, the bishop retreats and white plays rook to g6, attacking f6, the bishop protects, Lila plays g4 though, and bishop d6 is played. So at the moment white can't take on f6 because then rook takes g8 will be played. So she plays g5. After h takes g5, plays h6. Bishop e7 to protect f6 again. And now just h7. And look at this rook on h8. Terrible. The bishop supports the pawn and the pawn supports the bishop. Um, and black's basically in a clamp. And now it's just a matter of time until white can clean up this game and get the king and the rook into decent positions to clean everything up. Basically, white's just going to march their king into the g7 square at some point and try and pick up the rook. g4 will be played, bishop takes d5, and at any moment white can just play king g7. So king d6 is played, bishop g2, bishop f2, finally king g7, rook d8, white gets a queen, bishop takes the pawn, Rook d3 attacking the bishop, Stockfish defends, and Lila just finishes off with Rook takes d4 and King takes d4. Here Stockfish resigned the game, and Lila won. So why is this? Well, just for instance, White can just play King g7, and if King e5, just play King to g6, and after let's say g6, White can just move Bishop a8, let's say, and if uh, King f4 just take, and all of a sudden. This bishop's always going to cut off this pawn, and white's going to march his pawn up the board. A very easy win for white in this end game. So ultimately, I believe it was this manoeuvre with this rook g3 that ultimately won white the game here. And it was actually quite an interesting idea, just launching this h pawn up the board and playing rook h3, rook to g3. So it seems to work in these positions where you manage to get a pawn on e5, because then this pawn and this h pawn dominate these two squares. So it's very interesting, actually. And probably worth trying out in your own games. Maybe in like a French variation position. Or an advanced French position where it's easy to do so. And your king's quite safe. But anyway, hope you enjoyed game number 28. I'll post game number 29, hopefully tomorrow. Anyway, I hope you're doing very well in lockdown. And I'll see you all very soon.